The year was 2009. I didn't know anything about cameras or photography and didn't do my research, but I wanted one anyway to take good pictures. I was looking for something with a big lens, zooms. I didn't care if it was huge. It was probably better if it was huge. My only real camera experience had been with the Sony Mavica, these floppy disks and a couple of little automatic point and shoots that were terrible. Also, keep in mind that right now cell phone cameras weren't really too much of a thing. Uh, my phone didn't even have one. It just had a flippy hinge. So I ended up with this. Big Camera Energy. Maybe not so much. The one I ended up getting was the Fujifilm S1500. It is now 2020, and I still have it. It is part of what used to be a very popular category of compact camera called the bridge camera. It is designed to bridge the gap between the SLR and the point and shoot. This larger size allowance is usually taken advantage of by allowing for a longer zoom and more functions not normally seen on compact cameras. Fujifilm focused on making these particular ones as small as possible. They even made some with similar features that are even smaller, which would be the T-Series. Compared to the Canon 5D here, it is diminutive. Function and image quality aren't even up for comparison, but it gives you an idea of the general shape that they were going for versus size. Since not everyone knows how big a 5D is off the top of their head, here it is compared with some other everyday objects. The lens is pretty long, and it's motorized. Bridge cameras with manual zoom lenses exist, but they are on the more expensive side. At about $180 on a special military package deal, this was not that. 12x zoom doesn't really mean much without knowing the widest focal length, but the 35mm equivalent zoom is 33 to 396 millimeters, which is a very large range. Here's a video that kind of gives you an idea of what that looks like. It also gives you a good idea of the S1500's low light performance, or lack thereof. That's not really what the camera's for, so I'll give it a pass. Let's take a look at more of the outside. Over here you have a USB AV out combo jack. It of course uses an odd little cable that is either USB out or AV, sorry not both. And up here you have the top plate. The big dial goes through all of your different modes. It is easy to read and consists of mostly universal indicators. The only two different ones are SP for soft portrait and SR auto which is a scene recognition automatic mode. Next to that is a little indicator light to tell you when the SD card is being accessed. The on and off switch is the kind you push and hold over for a moment and it stamps back on its own. And above that are facial recognition and anti-shake on and off buttons. The thingy above those turns left and right to operate the zoom and in the center is a shutter button. Oh, but what is that to the left? It's got a pop-up pop -up flash. flash. The utility of the pop-up flash is no joke. It can be used to trigger an off-camera flash. This is excellent and we'll talk about why later. Now let's look at the back. The rear display is colorful and big considering the era that this camera is from. While grainy, it does its job well. It actually looks a lot worse on the video than it does in real life. The layout packs a lot of function and not a lot of buttons, which is okay because they're all well labeled. The buttons have a nice clicky feel. The S1500 has Fuji's F button, which brings up some basic functions such as the ISO and film sim modes without having to dig through a whole bunch of menus. But the menus are easy enough to navigate and very comprehensive. This thing has a lot of things to play with and tweak. The most important features back here, the manual controls, are accessed by pressing the exposure compensation button on the bottom right and pressing on the directional buttons. This isn't as intuitive as the dials on an SLR, but you get used to it and hey, manual controls on a compact, not complaining. Many bridge cameras throughout history have looked all mighty and big and have lacked those manual controls. Bridge cameras have had EVFs for many years and it gives the same advantages as it does on modern mirrorless cameras. It also has the delay and other disadvantages as well. The EVF is actually very usable. Colors look fine and the resolution's better than you'd think it would be. It really is above expectation. Using it has the added benefit of being able to brace the camera against your face for a steadier shot. Now for the really important part. How is it using it? And what kind of results can you expect? The answer to that is why I would recommend this or another advanced bridge camera to a beginner on an extremely limited, sometimes under $20 budget. What you get out of it really correlates to how much effort you put into it. If you put it in auto, you're not going to like it. 
If you learn to use it, it's great. The automatic mode tends to favor higher ISO settings even in broad daylight. I believe this is part due to the dual IS function. This particular camera doesn't do too well over ISO 400, so I'd recommend staying below 200, but it's always best to shoot at the lowest you can. In this case, ISO 64. ISO 100, though, is barely any different. When you learn to use the manual mode, the camera really shines. Images at base ISO are very sharp for what it is. Colors are nice. Before we go any further, there is one crippling rub. No raw output, but that's to be expected. You can still do some work with JPEGs, uh, nowhere near as much, but there are improvements that can still be made. This really forces you to get it right in the camera, which for somebody who wants to learn, it's not a bad thing. Back to the pop-up oh, flash. The S1500 automatically syncs to the flash when it is up, giving you a lot of control when shooting with speed lights or strobes. You simply adjust the strength of the off-camera flash manually and then use the on-camera flash to make them fire. I'm thinking about doing a video on this to show how it works. Would I buy this camera for my studio? No, but it's really cool that it gives somebody new to the hobby a way of experimenting and learning on the cheap. A cheap slave flash can be had for about 10 bucks on the low end, and they work just fine. All in all, the S1500 is a great $20 hello. Manual controls, pop-up flash, flash to control off-camera flash, very low base ISO, usable EVF, solid build quality, and cheap rechargeable AA batteries for power, all for $20 to $40 on eBay. For the learner, why not? Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you like what I do, subscribe and throw up a like to encourage me to keep going. I've got a lot of other stuff you might find interesting. Thank you, Purple Cat, for allowing me to use your music via freestockmusic.com. Have a good night, keep shooting, and stay healthy.